consideration provided by. I've been telling everyone the secret to great teeth is having healthy gums. Keep yours healthy with Crest Advanced Gum Restore. It's clinically proven to detoxify below the gum line. And it restores by helping heal gums in as little as seven days. Because you can't have a healthy smile without healthy gums. Advanced Gum Restore from Crest, the number one toothpaste brand in America. I just couldn't put it down. From Reese's Book Club to the big screen, only we can take you to the set of Where the Crawdads Sing, plus its connection to Taylor Swift. It was just a call that she made one day. Then, only we are on set with Michael Strahan and the $100,000 Pyramid. No, wait, no, 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 no. Hi, right, it's your show. I'm out. No, no, I don't want it. $100,000 Pyramid, hosted by Kevin Frazier. I'm out. I'm you know, if he's leaving, I'm staying. <laughs> oh, I tried to stay. <laughs> Oh, I did. Oh, listen, what y'all don't know at home is he's not kidding. Before we go, Ray. Happening now. A critical review released today highlights how law enforcement's response could have stopped the Uvalde gunman before he ever made his way into the building. Travis County officials have recovered the body of Roger Mendoza, who drowned at Lake Travis over the holiday weekend. Coming up, we learn how his love for dance changed the lives of so many people. We're in the middle of our driest first half of the year in 97 years, and unfortunately, little to no chance for rain over the coming days. I'll give you those details coming up. The News at 5 starts right now. The first at 5, the sound of an explosion leading to evacuation. Some northeast side businesses evacuated this afternoon after a fire broke out near a welding business. That's what you're seeing behind us. And we first told you about this around 3.30 this afternoon. The fire was over by Thousand Oaks and Wetmore Road. That's where our RJ Marquez is right now. RJ, there was heavy fire and smoke this afternoon. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, Steve and Stephanie, so for the most part, fire crews are still here at this scene, but they have mostly gotten it under control. I'm going to go ahead and step out of the way so we could show you the very latest out here from this fire call. We have the platform, the firefighters are still up on that platform, and there was a gas tanker trailer that basically caught fire, and you could see it along that tree line right there. That's where the re initial reports of a brush fire came in, but when firefighters arrived, arrived at this scene, they realized that this was a little bit more serious than in that situation. So this fire breaking out this afternoon along Wetmore Road near Thousand Oaks, right at that intersection at, as you guys mentioned, quality, wielding, and fencing. And what we were just told from Fire Chief Charles Hood was that the driver of a tanker trailer was carrying thousands of gallons of diesel fuel. He was unloading it into the underground storage at this business when that driver noticed that sparks were coming from the vehicle, from the truck. The truck became fully engulfed in flames and people inside had to rush out of the building as explosion-like sounds were reported from several eyewitnesses and people in this area. Here's more of what Chief Hood had to say. I want to credit the, the people that work here as far as their evacuation plans, as far as their safety training and the drills that they do. Uh, they were all accounted for when we got here, so everything that they could do to make themselves safe, they did that today. All right, and you just heard from Chief Hood right there talking about the evacuation process for these workers. So miraculously here with the amount of fire and what was initially reported, the chief basically said that the driver escaped with minor injuries. So he's being checked out, as did everyone else inside. So that's important to note. Firefighters did have to treat one person for a heat related issue. But again, no one was seriously injured out here because of the quick thinking of those workers inside. And again, still on the scene here as fire crews kind of wrapping things up there still taking care of that tanker trailer, which was completely engulfed. That's a total loss. There was a storage shed that was also a total loss, but the main building here, the business, was said to have very minor, minor damage. So reporting from the northeast side, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, RJ. Now to a breaking news update on the Uvalde school shooting. A notice of deposition has been sent to the Uvalde Sheriff Ruben Nolosco. It's another request to get him to voluntarily testify. So the Texas House Investigative Committee is saying that thus far, Nolasco has refused to. They say that since June 9th, 36 people have provided voluntary sworn testimony, and that includes 17 civilians and 19 members of law enforcement. So they would like Nolasco to do the same. And they've scheduled that deposition for Monday afternoon.
We'll see if he agrees. Now to a major development in the Uvalde school shooting investigation. A new report highlighting multiple missed opportunities by law enforcement to stop the Uvalde gunman before and after he entered that school. So the Advanced Alert Rapid Response Training Center, or ALERT, out of San Marcos, conducted that review with officers and investigators who were on scene. Our John Paul Barajas now takes us through their findings. The in-depth report takes into account all outside circumstances as well as what officers did and what the report states they should have done. It points out three key failures before the gunman even made entry. The report states just prior to the gunman entering the school at 11.33 a.m., a Uvalde officer armed with a high-powered rifle had the gunman in his sights. He asked the supervisor permission to shoot. He didn't hear an answer, turning back to get confirmation. When he looked back towards the school, the gunman had already been inside the building. According to the Texas Penal Code, a reasonable officer would conclude in this case, based upon the totality of the circumstances, that use of deadly force was warranted, meaning permission to fire was not needed. The report went on to say the officer was 148 yards away, which is well within range, to shoot and strike that target. Before that, before that the report says a Uvalde School District police officer drove at a high rate of speed towards where he thought the gunman was but ended up driving past him, stating if the officer drove slower or approached on foot, that officer probably could have seen the shooter. Another failure, at 11.27, a teacher had propped the door open with a rock, which isn't safe, but appeared to be common practice. However, the teacher did run back inside, kicking the rock out of the way of the door, shutting it before the gunman got there, but did not check if it locked. Typically, the door should have locked on its own. It did not. Soon after, the gunman made entry unobstructed, firing roughly 100 rounds in three minutes, killing 21 and injuring 17. Coming up at 6, we'll take a look at the report's review after entry was made. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. We first brought you this story as breaking news on KSAT.com. You may have received our push alert from the KSAT 12 app on your smart device. If you did not get that alert this afternoon, you can still download the app. Yeah, that way you'll have the newest information on any news that affects you and your community. Also, follow us on social media. Just look for KSAT 12 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The Texas Game Warden reported at least 10 drownings over the holiday weekend. One of those, a San Antonio man named Roger Mendoza. Here's a picture of him. He is a man who leaves behind a legacy. The 33-year-old's body recovered from Lake Travis this morning. Friends and people who knew him through his dance studio tell our Camelia Juarez they're devastated today, yet determined to keep his memory alive by doing what he loved most. It was like any other holiday celebration for Roger Mendoza. He was swimming in Lake Travis, racing a friend, but Mendoza went under and never resurfaced. Travis County officials recovered his body this morning. But Roger is just my family. And when we didn't know what to do, I didn't want to believe it. Mauricio Rios is one of Mendoza's closest friends. They met through drag dance competitions and joined a dance crew on the Riverwalk. And I met him and immediately blown away. His dance, he was born for the stage. Mendoza founded Studio AVI, a dance studio for all levels of dance. He didn't even know how amazing he was and the impact he had on people and through his love of dance. Mauricio says Roger used dance to connect with the LGBTQ plus community and anyone seeking confidence in themselves. Although he is gone, his legacy lives on through dance. Roger loved with all his heart, whether it was friends, family, or his business and the love of dance. When Roger did something, he did it, and it was not going to be unnoticed. A vigil will be held here for Roger tomorrow at 7 p.m., and people are encouraged to wear workout clothes to celebrate Roger through dance. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Other news now, we know who was killed last month in his northeast side apartment. His name is Maurice Duche Jones. He was 43 years old. Investigators say that he was found dead at his apartment complex near Eisenhower and Ritterman Roads. That was back on June 22nd. The medical examiner says that someone shot him in the head. At this point, police haven't arrested anybody for Jones's death. More victims identified in the human smuggling operation on Quintana Road last week. Today, we learned a total of 47 victims have now been identified. Their names 
released by the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. Those people are from Mexico, Guatemala and Honduras. They range in age from 13 to 55 years old. There are still six people who have not been positively identified Four survivors still in area hospitals. Today, a federal hearing for the alleged driver was actually waived. He did not make a court appearance. You can read more about the story on KSAT.com. This was really a devastating story. Seven lives were taken during a 4th of July parade in Illinois, and now we know their names. 64-year-old Katherine Goldstein. People described her as everyone's best friend. She was also a devoted mother who loved adventure and cooking. And Irina and Kevin McCarthy, they were at the parade with their two-year-old son, Aiden. Both of them were shot and killed. Two people found Aiden wandering the parade route alone. They took care of him until he was reunited with relatives. Every time I tried to ask him what his name was, the response he gave to me in return was, a mama dead to come get me soon. Mommy's car come to get me soon. Oh, geez, that's devastating mm -hmm. to hear. Victim Jackie Sunheim, right there you see her, was remembered at a devoted mother at her synagogue. Nicholas Toledo, a dual citizen of the U.S. and Mexico, leaves behind eight children, seven grandchildren. Stephen Strauss also died. Eduardo Uvaldo died the day after the shooting. Now, right now, more than a dozen people are still in the hospital. And today we're finding out we're finding out, excuse me, how the alleged gunman carried out that attack. Officials revealing Highland Park was not his only target. ABC's Morgan Norwood with details. The suspected gunman who police say unleashed nearly 70 rounds on July 4th parade goers in Highland Park, Illinois, now being held in jail without bond. It comes as police begin clearing the parade route of strollers, wagons and personal belongings of those forced to run for their lives during the chaos. The state attorney saying today the alleged gunman's rampage could have been worse. It appears when he drove to Madison, he was driving around. However, he did see a celebration that was occurring in Madison. Uh, and he seriously contemplated using the firearm he had in his vehicle to commit another shooting. Robert Grimo III faces seven counts of first degree murder. Officials say dozens more charges are likely. For each individual was hurt, people can anticipate an attempt murder charge as well as an aggravated battery with a firearm charge. As police work to uncover a motive, growing questions about misread flags and whether the suspected gunman should have had access to a firearm. Illinois police say the suspect passed four background checks in 2020 and 2021, despite two prior police incidents in 2019 when he threatened to take his own life and that September when police say they confiscated knives after family members accused him of threatening to kill people. There was never a firearm uh, restraining order that's what I have used the term red flag. That is an order where uh, primarily family members and, and, and other individuals can go to a court and ask that somebody have their firearms taken uh, and not be allowed to purchase firearms. To be very clear, that did not happen in Mr. Cremo's case. The suspected gunman is due back in court next month. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Highland Park, Illinois. Now we want to take a live look outside right here back home. This is 1604 at John Peace, where you can see traffic is flowing smoothly even at this hour, 510 right now. But if you look right there, you see it's 101 degrees. And Sarah, apparently this is not normal. Well, it's normal to see temperatures in the triple digits this time of year, but to have the hottest May on record followed by the hottest June on record, and we've had six consecutive days of triple digit weather to start July. That's the unusual part. 104 in Del Rio, 101 in Schertz, and it's 99 in Bilverde and 101 in Mico. Coming up, more unusual weather, how dry we've been so far this year. I'll have a look at those details and, of course, your toasty forecast coming up. Thank you, Sarah. Well, if you're one of the many Americans turning to flipping or remodeling your home, one thing you might be undecided on is flooring. Wood options are great, but which stand up best against scratches, stains and scuffs and what you can do to better protect the wood flooring you may already have a 12 in your side report when we come back. Myra Arthur here in the KSAT 12 newsroom, and here's a look at what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock this evening. De facto deportation or just a ride? A sheriff along the border has said that he brought people back to a port of entry when federal authorities would not immediately take them. We talk with immigration attorneys about whether that's legal. 
Plus, the old Bear County Courthouse finally undergoing a facelift, and this one is to better accommodate those with disabilities. Erica Hernandez takes a look at the construction and speaks to those who started pushing for this renovation two years ago. All that and more tonight on the News at 6. We'll see you then. Thank you, Myra. I'm glad you brought up renovating because when it comes to updating homes, hardwood floors are a super popular choice. They can look amazing, but of course they can get scuffed and scratched. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz tells us which ones can best stand the test of time. Their classic hardwood floors never go out of style, but any good flooring needs to stand up to a lot of abuse. So Consumer Reports tested a variety of wood floors to see how well they resist dents, scratches, stains, and foot and paw traffic. This solid wood flooring from Terragren is made from bamboo. It aced the scratch and dent test and was very good at resisting stains. It's $7.50 a square foot. If you get a lot of foot traffic, they recommend this LL flooring red oak instead for $6.30 a square foot. Whether you're installing new floors or you have them already, they do require some special care. A no-shoes inside rule can be great if you can enforce it, but it can be tough with kids and pets tracking dirt in. Use doormats at entrances and area rugs in high traffic zones. To limit scratches, use felt protectors under furniture legs and avoid sliding furniture. A good vacuum can help too. CR says this Kenmore Elite Pet Friendly Upright is a good choice for bare floors and carpets. If you're tempted to mop, experts say go very easy on the water and never use a steam mop because they can damage those hardwoods. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, now let's take a live look outside here. We have Sky 12 here giving us a lovely shot near uh, the downtown area yeah. right now. But, you know, we want to talk about something that's happening in less than two hours. It's called Party in the Park. There's going to be live music at Commons Park. It's along La Cantera Parkway. And, you know, it's going to be fun out there. But I'm just looking at 101 degrees right now, Sarah. Ay. Hot yeah, tunes. Around, around 7, we're still going to be in the upper 90s. Sizzling, you, sizzling music. You, yeah, I wanted to make oh, sure you heard Steve. I Hot didn't. tunes. Hot. Sizzling music. Way to go. I can always count on you for one of those, Steve. Just thought I'd put um, that out there. Hey, I did want to start, though, and talk about our rain chances over the next few days. Does not look good, as you can see. 0% chance for rain through Tuesday, July 12th. And then on Wednesday, we do see a little glimmer of hope for a pattern change. But what I've been talking about is how how unusually hot and unusually dry it's been so far this summer. Don't get me wrong. It's always hot in the summer here in South Central Texas, and we often have to contend with drought. But as I showed you, we really don't expect any rain through July 12th. So far this year, we've only seen 5.11 and 11 hundredths inches of rainfall. Now we compare that since records go back to 1885 from January 1st to July 12th. We are in second place for the driest first half of the year on record. That is the driest in 97 years. In 1925, Calvin Coolidge was president. So again, we have got a very unusually dry first half of the year. Everybody remembers 2011. We had a little bit more rain by this time that year as well. And in the 50s, there was extreme drought. Those are in the sixth place through 10th place there. So it is unusually dry and unusually hot. 100 in San Antonio for the high today, 101 in New Braunfels, 101 in Gonzales, 102 in Del Rio, and it was 104 in Catula and Laredo. Where's the rain? Well, not across South Central Texas. We're seeing a lot of rainfall across the Rockies and across the Appalachian Mountains for that matter. But there's that heat high. It is going to be building over South Central Texas in the coming days. Today, because of that heat high, it's 101 right now in Memphis, Tennessee. Hotter than San Antonio right now because of that heat high. Now, as we see uh, that temperature, uh, that heat high move over Texas, we'll be at 101 tomorrow. By Friday, 102. 103 on Saturday. And if you were watching the forecast yesterday, I said 103 was concerned conservative for Sunday while well, we're bumping that high up to 105 as that heat high settles over Texas. So yes, it is going to be hot, but by early next week, that heat high is going to move off to the west and it's going to open up an opportunity for rain.
opportunity. Only a 20% chance on Wednesday at the moment. But keep your fingers crossed that we can bump up that rain chance. 100 outside right now, but it feels like 102 because of high humidity. And tonight we'll be seeing temperatures fall into the 80s after sunset. By the way, it's going to be another windy night. Gusts up to about 25 miles per hour. Tomorrow for your Thursday, waking up is 78 degrees. A few clouds, but mostly sunny to completely sunny in the afternoon. And 101 for the high temperature. And again, with that heat high settling over us over the weekend, it is going to be a dangerously hot weekend for any kind of outdoor activity. Activities. Again, we're used to this kind of heat, but you got to be careful outside when it's this hot. Coming up at six, we're going to talk about how, what this drought has done to our local rivers. Mm, thank you, Sarah. All right, I'm looking at 105, and I'm thinking when the Spurs <laughs> youngsters get yes. to Las Vegas, they may be. It could be cooler there than it is here. That might actually be a possibility, which is very odd this yeah. time of year. Yes. When we come back, uh, they are Las Vegas bound. We'll check in to see if they are ready to go for the summer league games, and where will Kevin Durant wind up? Coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs are just two days away from tipping off the NBA Summer League games in Las Vegas as after getting in a final workout at the Spurs practice facility. Number one draft pick Jeremy Sohan out of Baylor will be making the trip after all with the team after testing positive for COVID, but his availability to suit up remains in question as he continues his rehabilitation in the NBA health and safety protocols. We do know the other two draft picks will be ready to go in Malachi Branham and Blake Wesley, who just signed his first ever professional contract. It's interesting. It's a juggling act of trying to give enough structure and organization so there are roles, but give enough freedom so they dictate the roles, right? This is, Summer League is different than the season. So there's a part of us that want them to tell us what it should be, but it's our job that it's not a free-for-all on the circus. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a juggling act for sure. I'm excited, I mean, uh, to play in Summer League. Uh, I went to Summer League three years in a row to watch the games. I seen uh, Zaire Williams, uh, Kate Cunningham play last year. So to be able to play this year against them is going to be good, going to be fun. Here's a look at the Spurs schedule. By the way, all of these games are going to be televised. The Spurs take on the Cavaliers to open up on Friday at 4. Warriors next up on Sunday at 6.30. The Rockets on Monday at 6 p.m. And then a week from this Thursday against the Hawks at 2 p.m. The biggest offseason move will be where Kevin Durant will land. That's after the 15-year veteran requested a trade to get out of Brooklyn after only two seasons. It's after he thought he could help bring the Nets an NBA title. Now the two-time NBA champion with the Golden State Warriors would prefer to be traded to either the Phoenix Suns or the Miami Heat. But the Nets will take their time until someone is able Able to provide them with what they want and that's a ton of first round draft picks and if Rudy Gorbera can get four first round draft picks from Minnesota with only one top five protected you can only imagine what Durant will bring. President Joe Biden spoke with the wife of Jill WNBA star Brittany Griner today to assure Sherelle Griner that he is working to secure her freedom from Russia where the administration believes Griner is being wrongfully detained. This is after Griner sent a handwritten letter to the White House to tell the president she is afraid she could spend forever in detention after being accused accused of bringing cannabis oil into the country back in February. And she's not the only American over there that is jailed or wrongfully detained that they're also trying to bring back. Yeah, and with what's happening in Ukraine, Absolutely. I mean, relations are strained anyway. Exactly. It's going to take some time. Yeah. And Thanks Brittany also that. talked about the other detainees in her letter, too. So exactly. she wasn't just talking about herself. Yeah. We'll be right back after this. Well, you know, it's really hot when you look at that 99 at the end of the forecast. And you're like, ooh, it's cold front. You coming. want it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's going to be very hot. In fact, we are going to challenge records. We could very well beat a record on Sunday with that forecast high of 105. Stay cool and remember stage two watering restrictions for SAWS customers. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching the News at 5. World News is next, and we'll see you right back here at 6 o'clock.